Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. With my wife and kids, we run an antique shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, filled with some of the most unique items we can find. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. I'm home, honey! Well, today it's just going to be me working away. Uh, Paul might stop by later, I don't know about that. I have these occasional pop-in guests that uh, they just knock on the door. <laughs> um, Mark is uh, running behind and I don't think he's able to come get some clothes. He's really planning the big move out tomorrow. So uh, tomorrow and Sunday, this weekend, are going to be the, the crazy, busy, massive clear-out days. And I'm really looking forward to that because that'll clear up the basement so I can start going through there. Uh, in the meantime, though, today, in the absence of Hans and Zenobia, which I didn't bring on to help me out because... There's not much for them to do until the basement's cleared out. Uh, I'm gonna do what little garbage hauling there is, try and clean up uh, some of the trash and get rid of that dump in, hopefully next week once and for all because um, uh, I only have it rented for, for the month and I wanna get it gone before Christmas. So we'll do a little treasure hunting today, uh, do a little cleanup, and maybe I'll sort some of my stuff so that I, um, you know, know exactly what I'm going to start inventorying for auction. And by the way, for all of you watching home and lots of people are sending me emails saying, I want to buy this or I want to buy that. Uh, we are auctioning off the majority of the cool finds at uh, Kastner Auctions, which is an auction house I deal with here in Edmonton. Uh, their website is kauctions.ca. I'll put it in the description down below too, so you have it. But if you see something you think is cool, no need to email me. Just wait until the auction date and odds are it's probably going to show up. Uh, so for now, I'm going to pull up to the house see what treasures await and uh, hopefully find a few interesting things. Follow along. First order of business, I'm gonna try and get the uh, rest of the floor cleared up in this room. This is where Paul and I were working on records the other day. Um, I'll probably try and sort some of those into uh, keepers versus sellers. Or I guess items that would be going to auction. Probably all go to auction at the end of the day. Um, that little desk I'm kind of happy about. That is a nice piece. Um, but before I can move around in here and make this a clean space, I've got to get the floor all tidied up. And that means shuffling a bunch of stuff around, <laughs> like usual, um, so I can begin the sorting process. So I guess, uh, I guess I'll probably start by moving that chair out of the way. We were sort of stacking records on this chair the other day. And there's a lot of great classics. Good old Marty Robbins, you know, El Paso. I love Marty Robbins. And a lot of these records that are in here in really good condition too. Um, most of them though, I'm just gonna put it in a bin and send it off to auction. And there's probably like three, four bins of records that came out of that closet alone. Uh, but there are probably gonna be a few in there that I wanna keep for myself or for the shop, just cause I like music too. So you gotta find some things for yourself, right? Some fun records in here. Fonzie favorites. <laughs> What's funny is that I don't think Henry Winkler could even ride a motorcycle. I am pretty sure that uh, he couldn't. And then he just kind of rolled up on it for scene. This would turn into a little, uh, that would fold out. And you would make that into your picture of a young, devilishly handsome Henry Winkler. <laughs> the Fonz, hey, you can hit some machines to solve your problems. Mind you, I have Fonz my way out of many situations that's worked. Fleetwood Mac, early Fleetwood Mac actually is pretty bluesy. This is from the early 70s. A lot of their stuff when they first started uh, wasn't really in the pop genre. It was more like gritty rock kind of blues. Now, old Fleetwood Mac, everybody has, you know, their, their Rumors album or uh, some of the other ones that are a little bit more famous. But the early stuff is actually really good listening too. The Lennon Sisters. <laughs> What's funny about this and, uh, and looking at this album cover is that if you've ever seen Kristen Wiig do the little hands routine <laughs> on Saturday Night Live, they're kind of mocking this sort of group where it's all the sisters come out dancing and singing. <laughs> and then she's the one that has like tiny doll hands for whatever reason. Anyway, that skit always makes me laugh. <laughs> uh, if you haven't seen it, it's funny anyway. Kristen Wiig doing the, the tiny hands routine with Will Ferrell. Um, you know, a mockery of bands like the Lennon Sisters. <laughs> uh, but I am having a good time going through these albums and getting them separated into bins. So a whole bin like this is just gonna go up for auction. We'll just do an assortment of like 
100 plus records, uh, you know, rock and whatever. And there's kind of a mix, you know, from Eagles to Bruce Springsteen. Um, I already have lots of copies of those at the shop already, but I don't have, um, you know, you know, Dirty Blues Band and things like that. Those are things that I'll probably be able to sell at the shop. So I'm gonna keep a small little assortment of things to sell at my store, but the rest of this, it's auction bound. Bobby and Robert Kennedy from Jacques Lowe photographer 1969 fairly early after uh, the death of a year or two after Bobby Kennedy anyway and I've been careful to kind of make sure that you know I'm looking inside of things because you never know when you have something hang on, something a little bit more unique I need something to put this on Look what we found! Oh, that looks like a uh, a multi, like a, a diamond uh, band. We've got some gold rings. What else is in here? Another. Oh, well, that's. I don't know if that's birthstones or what that is. Come on, there's another bag in here. Where is this from? Bradford Exchange, okay. Probably one of those mail away things. But, you know, some of the stones are out of that one. But there's some gold in here. I'm not gonna complain about that. A little handful of gold and who knows what else. We'll have to get our loop out and check and see what the other materials are, whether they're silver or white gold or platinum. Actually, I might be able to see. That one's silver which is why it has cubits in it. But these others might be uh, white gold. I'm gonna keep those somewhere safe. Start building up a little stash of special stuff. I was disappointed for the last day or two that maybe I'd run out of uh, finds, out of jewelry finds, but goes to show you gotta look on every little bag, every square nook and cranny. You gotta check the books, make sure there's nothing in them other than stickers, I guess. Hmm. Well, one good little find today so far. There, that just about has the carpet ready to take out. Let's go ahead and see what's under the rug. It is more nice flooring. Shiny hardwood floors. Protected after 50 years of dust and debris. They're like in perfect shape. Well, at least the one good thing about this house is that where there's wood, you probably don't have to redo it. I'm going to get this thing outside. I don't think it's any kind of quality carpet. And even if it was at one time, it's in really bad shape now. So I'm going to haul this thing out, throw it in the dump, and uh, then I'll have another little clean room to sort in. the door in the office to see what's in here. Uh, let's see. Let's see what's down. Oops. That fell down. Uh, what's down here? Oh. Well, this looks like a camera lens and it feels heavy. Yeah, it's in there. What brand is it? Opticam. That's a good long lens, Japanese. I know they did a lot of traveling and safaris and things, so it makes sense they'd have some good long telephoto sort of lenses. Yeah, that's a keeper. Put that over in the keeper pile right over there. What else is in this drawer? Maybe this is where they kept the photography stuff. Oh, okay, posters, paperwork, more paperwork and bills. Oh, looks like an old radio back there. Soldering iron. Microphone. Yeah, I just have to pull this all out. See if there's anything in these little pouches. That feels empty. Yeah, that's just empty. 
Just a little eye accessory for a camera, little microphones. Everything gets separated. And who knows what's under the desk and in the other drawers. Still a lot of searching to do even in this room. Not quite there yet. And there's an award on the desk, a ribbon. Garment Exhibit Award of Merit, 87th Annual Convention, the Custom Tailors and Designers Association of America, Roosevelt Hotel, New York City, 1967. I wonder if that's why there's so many clothes. Not just because of the interest, but because it was a passion of life. I don't think you win an award for uh, merit in garments in New York City unless you're really into that industry. Cleaning up the bookshelf as well. Found this early book on social etiquette. This has got to be a pretty old copy. Let's look at the outfits they're wearing. And what does a young lady do with her time? This book is in a little bit. The spine's a little bit worn. That happens in age. Apparently that's what you do. You sit around and you play the harp in your fancy dress. Recital with, with harp accompaniment. Kind of a neat book. Things like that always do find a home. And then, of course, how the times change. People and music, and then look, they're all dancing and 1960s stuff going on. A little bit different from what was expected of them back in the day. You know, playing your pump organ or piano with a harp, or playing your banjo with your pals. With the floors more or less cleaned up in here, I can start to rearrange things into separate piles. I can put all my pictures over in one area. I've been saving all these small frame paintings on the wall until I had a space to put them, and now I do. And everything on here is generally pretty sellable, from the um, scenic paintings to the carved wooden Japanese art. You know, everything has its, uh, has its person for it, its end. And even these 1950s jesters, very mid-century modern, uh, cool piece that if you're decorating kind of 1950s style would really set it off. So everything here is going to go into uh, separate little boxes and bins and uh, get ready to be sorted later on. Getting a nice little assortment of pictures down there. And a lot of people saw this one on the wall and really, really liked it. Very 1950s, sort of like, you know, with the Queen's Gambit going on and um, Mad Men throwback. That's a really cool decorative piece. And I believe it's an original watercolor. I can, I can kind of see the overlapping of the colors and the lines. Oh, I quite like that myself. Um, there's a lot of original art. I'd have to take a little bit of time and look up the artist's names and see if maybe there's something up here that uh, is a little more noteworthy. Remember when I was in the basement the other day with Paul, we saw a ladder somewhere down here. There's their mound of stuff that has to go. Tomorrow's gonna be a big day cleaning all this stuff out. They found that, get this, these are all fur coats. There are, there were 10, I think 10 racks of fur coats from Holt Renfrew and 1940s Hudson Bay jackets. I, uh, I recognize that this fur isn't as popular as it was um, then. Back in the 1950s, when these fur coats were new, they would have been as expensive as buying a new car. They were not cheap. People would do payment plans on them and they might take years to pay off. So the fact that there's like 10 racks of them here is mind boggling. The amount of money that was spent over the years, um, you could have had mansions upon mansions, you know, and I'm in a very modest sized house right now. This house that we're in is not a huge home, um, but it is packed to the rafters. I mean, this, this was a family that was not afraid to spend money on nice things. Maybe just a little too much of it. Now, if memory serves, that ladder was back here in this little area. This is where Josh wants to look, where all the tools and everything are. Where I want to look right now is up in the attic. As I'm struggling to get the ladder upstairs, I just noticed there's a box of vintage Christmas ornaments and things there. Probably a dead giveaway because the Christmas tree stand is right there. We'll have to come back and do a little uh, exploring in this area on the basement episode, which should be coming up uh, after the weekend. In the meantime, I'm going to try and drag this ladder up the steps. It's really difficult navigating down here. It's quite dangerous, and I, I probably shouldn't be in this house 
uh, by myself right now because something could literally fall over on me and I could get trapped. So I'm not going to, I mean, I don't say that lightly. I'm not just joking. These are towers of boxes. And if they teeter over on you, your foot gets trapped or something. Um, I mean, luckily I've got my phone with me, but boy, you know, it's dangerous in these conditions. I'm going to get this thing upstairs and uh, go somewhere where I'm sure is much safer. We're going to poke our heads up in the attic. Ladder is in place. The only thing left to do is to poke my head up here. I'm going to stand out of the way because I know stuff's going to fall. The old school insulation. If there's anything up here. Yeah, this area. Uh, oh, this light fixture. Hang on. There's stuff in every square inch of the house, except the attic. I'm actually kind of relieved. Looks like there's been squirrels up here. If you were gonna hide something, you'd hide it right at the top, you'd think. What's in this plastic? Nothing. Okay. Oh, that's part of the roof, I think. All right. Attic is a no-go. I'm gonna get out of here. Yeah, I've done all the sorting I can do in that room for now. I've moved into the kitchen. The reason I'm moving around is that I'm trying to gather stuff for uh, charity and uh, also things that I can sell at auction. So I've started putting some dishes in this box. However, I noticed with this teapot, this is actually nice stuff. This is gold medallion uh, Wedgwood. This is uh, kind of fancy dishes and so forth. So I'm going to keep the set together and uh, possibly just look at selling this as a complete set. Uh, I'll probably run that through the sale. And I'll, I'll do the same with most of these sets here, but I'm also curious to know if I'm going to find anything else in here in terms of possible treasures. I don't know. So far, it's just been uh, generic sort of stuff. But um, we'll start filling boxes, and if I find something cool, I'll let you know. I was emptying out the cupboards, and I'm putting things sort of in groupings. So this is going to be a tub completely full of vintage salt and pepper shakers, a whole collection of salt and pepper shakers. Here lies Salty O'Day, a rope necktie, an old oak tree, and Salty wasn't what he used to be. <laughs> What's this one? Is this his old pepper? Here lies Pepper Tate, hanged by mistake. He was right, he was wrong, but we strung him up and now he's gone. Oh, that's dark. <laughs> uh, but there's, look, there's little peacocks in here from the 50s. Um, beautiful little chicken set. Made in Japan, so that'd be 50s. That they roost upon that little green base there. Tomato ware, that's also 50. All these, I think, are kind of in the 40s, 50s sort of range. So we're going to pack this up as its own little collection of salt and pepper shakers. And I have not found um, much else in terms of, like, treasure, treasure. But I did find some old cap guns. Well, that's not that old, but it is a cap gun. And does it work? Mm. Caps are probably spent. But, you know, there's the occasional fountain pen lying around and some other things. So far, um, we're making some progress. I'm getting some of the dish sets put away. We have a lot of this woodware, which I think that's more kind of 1960s. I'm sure you guys at home will correct me if I'm wrong, but that woodware was like 60s, 70s sort of stuff. And there's an awful lot of it in the top of this cabinet. You know, it reminds me of maybe having a fondue or something. <laughs> in fact, those might be, uh, those are skewers up there. And there is a fondue set around here somewhere. But um, I'm going to try and keep all the little sets together. So uh, this dish set, um, all the fine china in its own little area. But I'm probably going to call it a night pretty soon here after I get some of these things put away. Because uh, it looks like Mark is not coming to pick up his clothes. That's going to be tomorrow. So for now, I'm just going to uh, try and get things wrapped up around here. And see if there's anything that I forgot to bring back from the other day. Broken pieces of jewelry. I don't know if there's silver or not. Unlikely. But if there's anything special in here. Sold automotive garage ashtray. Somebody's painted it up. But that's an old uh, service station ashtray. Probably underneath all that gunk on the bottom, it used to say what brand it was. Like whether it was BA or Texaco or whatever ton of cigarettes or t I should say not cigarettes they're uh, cigarellos or small cigars but 
Move this out of the way, make a path. Hans is going to keep that coffee. I don't know if he still is. He seems brave enough to try and want to drink it. I'm going to turn the kitchen light off. And Melissa and I are going to come back tomorrow and work upstairs. So that can go off for now. Oh, I don't want them to leave the soup behind. Put that in his pile so he knows to take it. I mean, there's clothes pretty much everywhere. He's not going to have a, a want for clothing, that's for sure. I got the little desk moved over here. Looks better out of that room now, doesn't it? These should pop out. This is a replica of a Georgian style desk. These are, I think those are meant to pop out. There should be a little way to pop those out. Oh, there we go. They come out automatically. Okay, they're hinged. That's to support the weight. But it is still leather top. Burl wood. It's a nice thing. Like that, that is a nice piece to have in a house and it's still very practical. It's big enough you can put your laptop in there or your iPads. You could stack all your iPads in a row, have this little, little workstation. Things like this are usable now and so they still will fetch value because you can still use them for modern day goods. Um, let's see, this poor old Gibson guitar, which I have to try and find a neck for, the old 60s Gibson. Very valuable guitar when it's all complete though, so it's worth fixing up. I think that's about it for today. Let's see what's in the chocolate box. It's pretty heavy. We have gold cutlery. I don't think it's solid gold, it would be stamped. I think it is gold plated though. Wouldn't that be nice if this was chunks of solid gold? Odds are this is, um, there we go. I think it's stamped right there. I can see it. Some of those are gold plated and some of them are silver plated. You can see uh, where it says, if I can focus on it there. Uh, where is it? Okay, apparently I'm too, Anyway, it says EPNS on there, which means electroplated nickel silver. So that's not going to be, uh, you know, anything too fancy. Oh. Tomorrow when I'm back, I'm going to uh, go through the upstairs bedroom with Melissa. We're going to try and get that old mattress out of there. Actually, yeah, I'll do that tomorrow when she's here. I'm tired. I want to go home and have dinner with the family. Uh, but found all kinds of cool stuff. I found uh, Elvis's first record mix in here. Um, this cool little <laughs> English model building kit. It says it's a, a complete single cylinder steam engine uh, with a valve gear, cardboard working models. Kind of cool. Oh, and these were neat too. I hadn't seen these before. If you're an Elvis Presley fan, look, it's Elvis Bingo. So you have Elvis on there and I don't know you know, if this is a throwback thing from the 70s, or if this was uh, actually used in the 50s, because it's all, you know, it was in mixed in with a bunch of 1950s stuff, but they used to market the heck out of Elvis and they still do, so it's hard to tell with his stuff exactly what year it's from. Either way, folks, did get a lot done today. Got the carpet removed out of this room, started to organize, got some pictures off the walls. Melissa's probably not going to recognize it when she sees it next because it's really uh, coming along quite nicely. Turn the lights off and uh, I think that's about it for today. So just a short episode, a little light episode. Um, we'll have more for you guys tomorrow. So stay tuned as we uh, continue to dig around the house. And uh, boy, the next couple days are going to be really crazy as the basement gets emptied out. Um, and I have to start inventorying all this stuff. You can see all the stuff I'm going to have for the auction sale. It's going to be crazy. Um, by the way, that auction is going to be January 30th at kauctions.ca. It's online. They'll ship anywhere. So if you're seeing stuff that you like, just bid on it online when that happens. Um, it's going to take me a while to get this stuff all sorted. That's a certainty. But i um, excited to see how everything does. And we'll do an update video after that. And we'll see how we did after this whole adventure is over. See if it was all worthwhile. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see you all soon and bye for now.